Amen. Beautiful. So we are now in the second weekend of Advent, the second Sunday of Advent, and as, as we began the season of Advent, the series that we are in last Sunday, we, we focused on what Advent means, what, what, the, what the story or what the purpose or what the meaning of Advent is for us as Christians. We talked about the, the bigger purpose and the bigger meaning and symbolism of Advent. We talked about the first advent, which was Christ coming as a baby. And we also talked about the second advent, which we look ahead to, which we look forward to. And how we live in between, in, these, in this time, we live in between the first and the second advent. We talked about the anticipation of hope. As we go into the second Sunday of Advent, today we talk about the way of hope. We focus on how we prepare our hearts and lives for the arrival of Jesus. And so we look at a passage of scripture in Luke chapter 3 verses 1 through 6. I want to invite you to read uh, there along the screens or in your Bibles. You can follow along with me. Luke is, is setting the scene. He's setting the table for the time and place in which Jesus Christ arrives. Not as a baby, but as an adult to begin his messianic ministry. Beginning in verse 1 of Luke chapter 3. In the 15th year of the reign of the emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip ruler of the region of Ituria, and Trachonotus and Lysanias ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, that's a lot right there, isn't it? It's a, it's a mouthful. The word of God came. He identifies the time and place, and then he says, the word of God came in the midst of all that. To, the, to John, the son of Zechariah in the wilderness, he went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled. And every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall, shall see the salvation of God. This morning we read this passage of scripture, and John the Baptist is pronouncing, he's, an, he's announcing the coming of this Messiah. He's quoting the prophet Isaiah. And what he's doing is he's connecting the hearts and minds of the people of Israel to the coming of the Lord. <clears throat> In 1995, I had the privilege, I say privilege, of experiencing an earthquake. My unit was stationed in the Sinai Peninsula and in the Sinai Desert, there are mountains full of rocks, rocky mountains, very rocky, rough terrain. One morning, about 6.30 a.m., I was running up the side of the mountain doing PT, and I was by myself for some reason, and all of a sudden, I looked around, and everything was shaking, shimmering, shaking, and all of a sudden, boulders the sizes of cars were rolling down the side of the mountain towards me. The earthquake was measured at a 6.4 on the Richter scale. And boulders were came down and literally I was, I was bracketed between boulders. Boulders on this side and boulders on this side came down and blocked the roadway. It was a one lane path that kind of winded up the mountain. I was fortunate and blessed that one didn't fall on top of me. But as I, as I remember that moment... The roadway was blocked. The roadway was obstructed. 
for three weeks, the only way anybody could get on or off that mountain we were on was by helicopter. It completely blocked any way for any vehicles to get up and down the road that led to the top of the mountain. There's something about an obstructed pathway. There's something about a backed up highway in traffic. How many of us love those moments? If you work in Nashville and you commute to Nashville, you probably experience that every day. There's something about a traffic jam. There's something about a cluttered space. A room full of junk you can't even walk in. If you've ever been a parent of a teenager, you probably know exactly what I mean. There's something about a space that's just so full and cluttered that you can't even walk or move or operate that causes anxiety in us. It can cause frustration and completely stop any kind of progress. This is the picture that we're given here. John the Baptist gives us a picture, or, or I should say Luke gives us a picture of the rulers of the day. The rulers that were in power, the, the Roman authorities and the Jewish authorities. He gives us both the rulers that were a political and religious. And what he's doing is he, he's setting the scene and saying, this is where we live. This is where we're at. But now... Here comes Christ. And as, we, as he names these, these rulers, he names these people in charge. These, these are people who in many ways stand in opposition to the kingdom of God. And so he's quoting Isaiah 40. And as he does this, as, as he talks about bringing high places down, bringing low places up, and bringing crooked places straight... He's not talking about literal mountains and literal roads. He's talking about hearts and lives. As he, as he, as he gives us this idea, it's this, this picture of the valleys of those living in the low places of oppression and abuse, beaten down by life that need to be filled and brought to level. It's this picture of the people living in the high and lofty places of arrogance and pride and hypocrisy brought down to humility. It's this picture of the crooked places, the sinful people straightening out their ways in order to conform with the wishes of the king. Now in ancient times, Luke, Luke sets the scene and what he's doing is, by quoting Isaiah, he's, he's bringing us into this picture of when in ancient times a king who was arriving would send a party ahead of them, a messenger, that would prepare the road for the king's arrival. And that's who John the Baptist is. And so we see the systems of the world, the systems of their world, political and religious. The Roman authorities, they declared Caesar as Lord. The Jewish authorities, they were to follow a very complicated and cumbersome systems of, of religion that they had to abide by. Those were the systems of their world, right? But you see, they're systems of our world that parallel the systems of their world. We also have political and religious systems that we need to be aware of. Don't we? <clears throat> to many Americans, the American way is Lord. And the Trinity that we worship in our culture, I don't know if you knew this, but the Trinity that, that there is of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness... The cultural trinity that's often worshipped, there's some good things in that. But if we're not careful, we can worship it as a cultural trinity. And if we're not careful, the pursuit of happiness can obstruct the pursuit of holiness. 
And so in the Christian realm, we even think of things in the, in the religious realm. There's religious trends and systems and even churchy ways that we can get caught up in and place our hope in. Whether it's in a pastor or, or the right church or the right denomination or the right system or way of doing church or being a Christian, we can get wrapped up in these things and, and end up find, placing our hope in this. And if we're not careful, we can place our hope in political and religious systems of our world just like they did of their world. But John the Baptist gives us a very simple way of hope. He gives us a very simple way to hope. And that is two things that I want us to focus on this morning. Repentance and baptism. <clears throat> Forgive my voice today. I'm trying to fight through it. He gives us two things. Repentance and baptism. He does away with the religious and political systems. Now keep in mind, God gave us politics and religion, but they are human endeavors. And politics and religion can either advance the kingdom of God or thwart the kingdom of God. And so we cannot put our hope in politics or religion. We can only put our hope in who? Jesus Christ. And the way to hope is repentance and baptism. Not in politics or religion. It is repentance and baptism. Repentance is a turning point for the heart and life of a person. Repentance is a gift from God. Do you believe that? Repentance is... A, it's an act of grace. And it brings us closer in proximity to the Lord. It brings us closer in line and in step with God. The Puritans would often pray for what they call the gift of tears. How many of you have ever considered tears a gift? But when we are convicted by the Holy Spirit of sin that brings us to tears, we need to see that as a gift. Repentance is a gift because what repentance does is it turns our lives back around towards God. Repentance turns our life towards healing, towards wholeness, towards holiness. And to be given the opportunity, even the opportunity to repent is a gift from God. Repentance is foundational to the Christian life. Do you believe that this morning? Repentance is foundational to the Christian life. Second, there is baptism. There's baptism. Water baptism is the outward sign that happens once in most Christians' life. But it's an outward sign of an inward grace that continually happens every day in a Christian's life. You see, we, we are baptized by water as an outward sign of the baptism that's happening in our hearts and lives every single day. Continually being baptized by the Holy Spirit. We in the Church of Nazarene call it sanctification. In fact, if you will look at Mark and Matthew, if you will look at Mark and Matthew's account of the same uh, passage, the same section of Scripture where John the Baptist is proclaiming the coming of the Messiah, you will see further, further down that, that John the Baptist says these words, I will baptize you with water, but he, being Jesus, who comes after me will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Romans 6, 4, the Apostle Paul says, Therefore we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. So there's repentance and baptism. This is what John the Baptist says. He doesn't say, 
align yourself with this political party or this political leader. He doesn't say, follow these religious systems and these, and these rules and all these things that you have to do. He says the way to hope, the way to hope in your life, the way to hope in my life is simply through repentance and baptism. And repentance and baptism is not a one-time thing. It happens every day in the growing Christian's life. It is a continuing, growing work of grace in your heart and life as a Christian. And we often ask ourselves, as Christians, we, we, we genuinely want... How many of you genuinely... By a show of hands, how many of you genuinely want to experience more of God? How many of you genuinely want to know God more? How many of you genuinely want to hear God more? How many of you genuinely want to experience more of God in your life? How many of you want to have hope and peace that passes all of our understanding? And we often ask, we often ask ourselves, how can we do this? And it really really happens through repentance and baptism. When you boil it down, when you, when you take away all the complicated things that human endeavors lay on top of us, it's repentance and baptism. And it really happens in three layers of our lives. The first layer begins at the core of our person. Repentance and baptism of the heart. The core of who we are. The things that we, even good things in our lives, sometimes our hearts can adore and follow, that we can worship, that become idols. It's our deepest desires, our truest intentions, our heart. There's a baptism or repentance of the heart. Matthew 6, 21, Jesus says, where your treasure is, there your heart is also. There's a repentance and baptism of the heart at the core. Then you go in to our mind in the second level. The way we think, the way we, the way we perceive the world around us, the way, the, the, the presuppositions, the, prejudice, the, the prejudices as we have, the ideas, the patterns of our thoughts and our thought life. There's a repentance and a baptism of our mind. And then finally, outwardly, there's a repentance and a baptism of our life, our schedule, our calendar, what we do, where we spend our time, what we say, what we feed our minds and hearts with from the outside, and who we spend our lives with. There's a repentance and a baptism of our heart, a repentance and baptism of our mind, and a repentance and baptism of our lives. You see, God transforms you and me from the inside out. So if we want to truly experience more of God, if we want to truly know more of God, if we want to truly have hope in Christ, it's from the inside out. We are transformed and changed. Yes, thank you. We are transformed and we are changed from the inside side out. You see, politics and religion are all on the outside of us, right? And we can try to fix our lives and we can try to find hope in all these things outside of us. But true hope and true peace and true joy, the things we talk about at Advent, they happen from the inside out. They happen through what is called repentance. Repentance. And baptism. Not one time, but every day. You see, it is hard to find us, and it's harder for us to find God when our lives are filled with comforts and distractions and all the complications that this world brings us. 
It's harder for God to find us and it's harder for us to find God when we live in the high places of arrogance, pride, and hypocrisy. It's harder for us to find God and it's harder for God to find us when our lives are crooked and cluttered. And it's important for us to hear and see where this message is being preached from. You see, John the Baptist is speaking to a people who are in need of hope. He's speaking to a people who are in need of salvation from the wilderness. From the wilderness. He's speaking to them from the wilderness. And I think it's important for us as a people of God to recognize it is in the wilderness that the people of God are changed and transformed and shaped. Ever since the beginning, it was in the wilderness that the people of Israel, when they were delivered from Egypt, God shaped them and formed them to be his people in the wilderness. And it is in the wilderness that John the Baptist is saying hope and peace and joy and salvation comes. It is often in the wilderness when God shapes you and changes you and forms you. In the wilderness, all of a sudden, things aren't so cluttered and complicated. There is space. There is quiet. There is room in the wilderness. Now, some, sometimes wilderness is can be simple as a morning cup of coffee with the Word of God. Sometimes a wilderness can be as simple as, as your commute to work, just you and the Lord. Sometimes it can be at a retreat. Sometimes it can be in a quiet prayer closet. Sometimes the wilderness can be something bigger and harder that you have to go through. Sometimes it's through circumstances in life. Sometimes the wilderness can be because of a, a job loss extra time you didn't plan on having. Sometimes wilderness can be through the battles of life, whether it's sickness or depression or loneliness. But you see, it is in those wildernesses in our lives when God's voice and God's presence and God's God's activity and God's work can be most vividly heard and felt. Amen? For Melanie and I, our wilderness right now is her cancer battle. But it is in that wilderness, and we're just in the beginning of our cancer battle with her, but it is in that wilderness, I can already tell you, already, God has shaped us and spoken to us and we have experienced the presence of God in our lives and in our marriage like we've never had before. Because all of a sudden, all these complications and all these things that cluttered our minds and our lives and our hearts that we worry so much about aren't so important. Because when we are in the wilderness of our lives, sometimes, oftentimes, he has a way of showing us clearly what is most important. And his voice, his, his presence, his work, his power, his word can be heard clearly and vividly in the wilderness. Christ came. He arrived. John the Baptist was the messenger ahead of the king. Preparing the way, helping us prepare the way. And this message today is for us to ask ourselves, how do we prepare our hearts and lives for God to do something new? How do we rid ourselves of the clutter and the complications that can often obstruct the work of God in our hearts and lives? 
Are there rooms in your life that are full of clutter? Are there roadways and pathways in your heart that is full of boulders blocking the Holy Spirit's work? Are there ideas or agendas or desires or projects or things in your life that, that that's filled your heart and mind obstructing the new thing God wants to do? When he says prepare the way, he is asking us to remove what get, gets between us and him. And he's asking us to do this new work by allowing him to do it. As uh, the worship team comes to close our time, we're going to uh, close our, our service this morning with the sacrament of communion. And there are many ways we find intimacy with Christ through communion. But what we are always reminded of in communion is that through the physical elements of the, of the, the bread and the juice, there are physical elements representing the physical body of Christ. Meaning Christ came physically to us. And the question for us this morning is how do we continue to receive him? As you're invited to come forward in just a moment, you're invited to come receive the body and the blood of Christ. And if you think about it, we are filling our bodies, we're filling ourselves with Jesus. If you think about it, we are preparing the way for Christ to come into us. Yes, it's symbolic, but it is meaningful. Because what we're doing is we are receiving Christ. And we are inviting God to do something new. And I'm, I'm, I'm here to tell you, this season of Advent is so much bigger than the cultural Christmas. Do you believe that? It's an opportunity for revival. It's an opportunity for God to do something new in our lives and in our hearts. Something he's never done before. Because it's an opportunity for us to prepare our hearts and lives for him to work and to walk in newness. So I want to invite you to stand. If those who are going to help us serve would come. We come this morning reflecting upon the moment when Christ was with his disciples and he was preparing them for what he was about to have to go do on the cross. From that, from that moment forward, the church has participated in the sacrament of communion. Reflecting on who Christ is, what he has done, and continuing in this new work of repentance and baptism. And we read the words out of Mark chapter 14, verses 22. While they were eating, he took the loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. When we hear those words of Jesus, we don't, we don't see it as just those who were in the room with him. We see it as for all who come to faith in Christ. And you don't have to be a member of this church to participate in this communion. You simply have to trust 
that Christ is Lord. So as we talk about preparing the way in our hearts and our lives this morning, let us take this moment to come to reflect on what it is in the rooms of our heart that might be obstructing the new work of God. To reflect on what it is that may be obstructing the pathways of the Holy Spirit. And as we come to physically receive these elements, we come inviting Christ into us. To do something new in this preparing the way. To do something new in this repentance and baptism. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit. Even in this moment, we thank you for how you have spoken to us. And so, Father, we ask that you would help us to respond faithfully with earnest and humble hearts. We ask all of this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you come.